بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, thank you Dr. Manafuda she said uh, most of the topic which I have to say um, it's, it's supposed to be debate but uh, yesterday I uh, wasn't happy with the debate because uh, people were showing their own experience the debate it shows what uh, people should um, next uh, uh, of, on the debate is Dr. Nizar Naqshbandi and uh, we are on mutual uh, agreement so not much of uh, debate will be um, kyphoplasty is uh, used for uh, mainly osteoporotic vertebral compression fractures it can be used uh, these fractures are the primary or secondary osteoporosis it can be used also in uh, other uh, uh, indications like in uh, fractures due to multiple myeloma, metastasis, and trauma in elderly. The controversies about uh, vertebral compression fracture is uh, worldwide. It's very hot topic now. Um, this same same discussion was six weeks ago uh, in the North American Spine Society meeting, and there were uh, discussion. I'll tell you the result of the uh, discussion later on. But uh, uh, we, we're doing the same. We're discussing which to go for um, vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty. However, there's no controversy and nobody would not agree that you need to take action. And this action, at the minimum, you need to take medical treatment for osteoporosis. You need to diagnose the patients. You need to pick them up early. You need to initiate the treatment. Uh, the, you have to tell the patient about adequate uh, sun exposure. You have to restore their vitamin D level, especially in this country, as we have found that most uh, females and even most uh, males, even uh, most medical staff have uh, low vitamin D level. And uh, you have to uh, advise them about exercise and healthy lifestyle. As uh, Dr. Muna mentioned, uh, this uh, uh, vertebral osteoporosis fracture affect the quality of life. The patient, when he's elderly, he may have uh, many medical problems. Uh, he does not want one more to uh, increase of his uh, difficulties in life. Um, what is important that not all vertebral fractures are acutely uh, presenting, and uh, Dr. Muna stressed on that, uh, up to 50% are not diagnosed initially. And uh, the controversy is, do you need to treat these fractures when you just see them? Of course, you need to give them medical treatment, but do you need to do invasive procedures? If we diagnose a painless vertebral compression fracture, most people say yes, even if it is asymptomatic, because otherwise, if you have more than one fracture, especially in the thoracic spine, uh, you're going to have reduced lung capacity, and that, on the long run, will affect the patient. The um, impact of uh, uh, osteoporotic vertebral fracture on quality of life is great. Uh, especially when the patient have acute fracture and 40% uh, of the patient will present as acute. They are in severe pain. They're not happy during daytime, nighttime. They cannot sleep. They sleep in sitting. You give them large amount of analgesics. They're still uh, not happy. Uh, they're still in pain. And uh, uh, we know that because this is fracture. We have we we telling we treating like if we treat the fracture uh, in other area than spine by analgesic alone without immobilizing it, it will continue to be painful until it is sticky or it is united. So, are invasive procedures really required? They are required if we think for pain relief, and also they are required to restore anatomy as much as possible. The pain relief, of course, uh, some people will say of, we can uh, obtain pain relief by strong analgesic, bed rest, spinal orthosis, physiotherapy, modification of life. But all these, if we consider them one by one, they have negative impact on the quality of life and on the general health. So we, we have to, uh, and we can use them, but we, we have to consider that they're not the ideal solution. The, we need immediate and sustained pain relief, and this is important. And uh, fortunately, this can be achieved by both uh, uh, kyphoplasty and uh, vertebroplasty. The vertebroplasty initially was uh, done 
uh, for uh, vertebral hemangioma. It was reported in 1986. Soon, uh, was, uh, uh, studies were uh, going on by Jensen and all, and they reported uh, in 1997 uh, about uh, treating osteoporotic uh, 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 compression fractures by vertebroplasty. However, uh, again and again, uh, there are uh, numerous reports in the literature about advantages, disadvantages. Some of the report is, is uh, uh, complications, uh, very serious, but it's very minimal and only uh, one or few, which is the current uh, cement pulmonary fetal embolism. Uh, what is known that mostly uh, with the vertebroplasty, you worry about uh, extra vertebral cement leak, which is up to 65% in some literature. Um, that's why kyphoplasty came in in uh, time to do some procedure in which this cement does not leak. And if it does not leak, you uh, don't worry about the uh, uh, possible uh, complications. So it's ref considered kyphoplasty, a refined technique of vertebroplasty. Also, it is minimally invasive procedure. Uh, however, uh, according to the recommendation, ideally patients should stay uh, one night uh, at hospital. You need to give during procedure more analgesic, more sedation. Uh, if we'll uh, argue between me and Dr. Nizar, if this procedure, kyphoplasty, is safer and if it can give more benefits. Um, in theory, we, this is, we're pushing a, 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 a trocar through the medical, exactly the same. Uh, instead of injecting cement immediately, which has to be uh, somewhat low viscosity, we inflate a balloon. In this balloon, the also, in theory, has an uh, advantage of elevating the upper uh, vertebral end plate and elevating the anterior border of the vertebra. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a demonstration by the company about the, this is osteoporotic fracture, caused anterior depression of the wall and uh, superior uh, wall. Uh, the balloon inflated, it made a void, this void, uh, injected with the cement, so it's uh, unlikely that this cement will leak outside. And also, in theory, we have restored the height of the vertebra. And if we've done that, we've relieved the patient pain and uh, we've improved patient uh, lifestyle. Um, the reported benefits, as I say, Sustained pain relief, restoration of spinal bi biomechanics, uh, prevention of uh, future uh, or uh, fractures, which also Dr. Muna insisted on that, but uh, uh, locally, adjacent vertebra and other cells, and the reduction of kyphotic deformity. Pain relief, there's no question about it. It does give pain relief, and we were actually so pleased when we treated a uh, few patients. We didn't, I, I, I personally ha don't have a vast experience, but the few patients which we have treated immediate pain relief, which is also uh, can be achieved by vertebroplasty. Uh, the prevention of further fractures, the literature insists on that. Um, also, the patients which we have injected, they didn't, at least did not give, come to us with further vertebral fracture because, of course, we started them on medical treatment. Um, restoration of spinal biomechanics, because once we have a vertebral fracture, the center of gravity moves anterior to the vertebra, so there's uh, more likelihood that even um, uh, next uh, or recent uh, further trauma will fracture other vertebra. One minute. Yeah. And uh, if uh, kyphotic deformity uh, left untreated, it, they will cause general kyphosis of the patient. So. Recently, uh, some papers say that if we compare both, uh, then the uh, uh, kyphoplasty will give uh, better results as correction of kyphosis and less cement leakage. The less side effects, then are invasive procedures really required? Yes, but we still need more powerful evidence that we have to treat the uh, painless. Uh, vertebra, which you choose vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty. Kyphoplasty appears to have some advantages over the vertebroplasty, but also we need uh, evidence-based clinical guidelines. Thank you very much.